my name is Elder Waffenhorst. Right now I'm here in the MTC. We use Preach My Gospel to teach us, you know, how we should be teaching. As you're in class, you can see how what you're learning is going to be able to apply to people you meet. Get on a bus about six in the morning and head to the airport. Have fun. I love you. It's amazing that I'm here actually serving a mission because none of my brothers or sisters ever served a mission. And right before I was going to leave, my whole family got into a big argument of, you know, why was I going? And um, my dad was the one who was trying to get me to not go. And I stood up and I said, I know what I must do. You know, I know what the Lord wants me to do. And um, I walked out of the house, and, um, and I remember sitting outside under a tree. Um, my dad comes around the corner and sits down beside me, and he says, is this what you want to do? I said, Dad, I'm, I'm certain I've never been more sure in my life about anything. And um, he, he knew I didn't have enough money to provide for my mission. And so he, he looked at me and he said, now give me all your money that you have right now and I'll pay for the rest. Dang, I'm sorry you had a bad week. That's... It happens, I don't have them very often. They act in a caring manner, which I find very charming in such young men. It's just that I feel like I'm not succeeding, and uh, and then to have work be so hard, I just, I've been kind of wimpy for about a week. I'm fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's another thing these sweatshirts are good for. <laughs> <laughs> she lives alone. She doesn't have too much human interaction, and I think she feels alone. She feels like she's abandoned, like she doesn't have anyone to turn to for lack of a a better term, and you know, we have your back. And we I mean, we we really do care about you, and we do want what's best for you, even though we're just you know, twenty year old. It's not those kids. It's not those kids. <laughs> I'm a big fan of these two guys. I think they're exemplary young gentlemen. There's several things I admire about them, but they're good listeners, and they seem to listen with their heart as well as their ears. We're very happy that you're even willing to continue to meet with us. I just know that these things are true and they'll bless your life. I want them to be true. I hope that I hear from Jesus that Joseph Smith was his true prophet and that this is his chosen group. That's fantastic. What motivated you to to stop drinking for the past few days. I guess I have a clear mind with that. <laughs> that's, I, that's, I'm, I, I'm so happy, I'm speechless <laughs> okay. how, how good that is. As I grew up and I went to high school, I realized that I didn't really have any direction to my life. I didn't really know what to do with my life. I was going to church each Sunday with my, my family. I was doing these things because my parents wanted me to do it. And so I decided I was gonna read the Book of Mormon for the first time. I started out just reading a column each night, and I went to a chapter, sometimes more, and I just kept reading it, and I wanted to know if it was true. And I knelt down and prayed to know if it was true. And as I prayed, I, I felt an answer that the Book of Mormon was true, that everything that my parents had been t teaching me was true, that it would bless my life. And I, I felt comforted that good things were ahead.
up. It just felt right. I didn't, I didn't feel nervous anymore. I think it's an honor to have him be a worthy priesthood holder, to be able to do that for me. After the baptism, I just felt so light and so peaceful and comforted. It was emotional because um, it means a lot for our family and for our future. The best thing about it is that I can be able to return to live with my Heavenly Father again someday. And Jesus allowed a way for me to do that through his suffering and in anguish. So I'm really thankful that I've been able to take this step.